And welcome to this episode of Gabe's Cave. This ain't no regular meet the artist because you get to meet him. I mean, it's almost in person. It's in my person. It's third-ish person for you, but second <laughs> person for me. Rob Broussard, ladies and gentlemen. Artist extraordinaire. Look at the hat. You know he's an artist because if, if you wear a hat like that, you're either one of two things. One of them is an artist and the other one is... 1920s gangster? I don't know. You know. Peaky that. Blinders or something? We'll go with that one. Yeah. Or, new, <laughs> or a poor newsboy. Look, uh, Rob. Yeah, driver? Man, I don't know. Pick one. Everybody wears these things. Not everybody. You never catch Uncle Nasty in one of those. Why not? I think you could pull it off. I think it would give you some some it'd be some sophistication. Yeah, that's exactly what I am. <laughs> Sophisticated. <laughs> Bro, we was talking about these cards like while Alejandro yeah. was doing a thing, just you said he said something. He said, I, "I'm proud of this set." I am, man. I actually had a lot of fun working on these. I'm an '80s kid, so I got to really kind of dive into drawing some characters that most people don't ask you to draw. You know, you don't get too many commission requests for Alf, <laughs> which is a shame. Do you guys see? Do you guys see this? This this wonderful bounty of cards here. He is another one of the artists that do not keep five for himself he he sent back all 15 cards and that is extremely unselfish and that means that <laughs> more of you guys get to win some of these That's right you're welcome you grateful little ingrates rob before we even talk about these cards because alejandra can go get a picture and whatever you we literally just received a gabe's cave exclusive cover for the Crimson Bat. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, I didn't even bring one in here, did we? How'd you get that gig? Uh, Aaron Rizzo. He's the founder of the um, comic book Fiend Club. And um, they got started back in like 2015, which is right around the time I started getting into art again on um, Instagram. And so uh, we kind of just been, as they've been growing, I've been growing too like you know we just sort of all knew each other but Aaron Rizzo is the creator he's one of the creators behind the book so he I mean I'm not the only artist on it he got a, he got a handful of artists to work on it but it's him and uh, artist Tam Sagayan who does all the interior work and uh, the main trade dress covers and Aaron Rizzo is the writer behind the book and so he um yeah he just hit me up reached out you know, I was doing monster stuff for the OMG Equitas books and um like I said, we just kind of been friends on social media. I've never even met the guy in person yet. <laughs> I actually tried to get him here today to do the signing for the weekend, but he just couldn't pull it off with the holidays and everything going on. So, um, there, hey, we'll always there's possibly we'll get opportunity. Yeah, it'd be great having him back. He's from he's from the Vegas area, and I know he does a lot of traveling. So, so how did we get the exclusive cover? Like, I don't know. Oh well, I was gonna. So I was going to do this cover anyway. I'm a big Captain America fan, right? So I wanted to do a Captain America comics number one swipe. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a kind of a collector market for that. I got a lot of them, you know, the different swipes from that cover. And I always wanted to do one. And so whenever he asked me to do a cover, I did a holiday themed one first. And then I got the idea that I wanted to do one of the Cap comics uh, swipe or whatever. So I kind of hit up Marty. I was like, hey, man. Do you want to do an exclusive? You know, like I want to. I really want to do this. And you know, Marty guy was like, "Yeah, of course, we'll get some for the store." So like, okay, cool. I dig it. You know, I like Cap. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, who doesn't like Cap? We can do this all day. All day, son. Man, look, you '80s themed. You know, um, there there's a couple in here that me selfishly i just want to like take out and take with me like we could make it be which the 10 one, which ones are your personal favorite there buddy i'm gonna be honest with you you know i'm a venom guy so venom's got to come with me okay judge dread has got to come with me robocop okay. has got to come with me swamp thing and man this heart boy you know what i had to take more than five really <laughs> i would because i had to take the phantom and i'd had to take tick too and that's and that's being generous and leaving you guys the Spider Man that goes with the Venom. You know what I mean? And the amazing E. T. Oh my God. Like Yeah, that one was a lot of fun. And the Stay Puff he he looks puffy. How did I mean how'd you pull I mean he looks like he looks like you could puff him. 
as as little line work as possible i think you just do like a real thin outline and then the rest of it's all color pencil and markers and gray tone I did, yeah yeah that was kind of new i'd never actually drawn that character before well let's start at the top man we might as well get into it dude with the man the myth the legend only he's not a man technically but alf <laughs> was it uh alien life form yeah 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 form? alien life form yeah i was uh yeah i remember watching that show every week when i was a kid back in the 80s what was it like i think it came on in like 86 1986 something like that nick at night i watched on nick at night <clears throat> that was, i wonder if that was whenever i wonder if that was the rerun era or if that was well it was in I think circulation it was rerun, rerun era because yeah. i was born in 85 I don't remember what sta- what uh, network it played on. I want to say it was like CBS or NBC or something like that back in the day. But um, yeah, man, I remember watching that. And in recent years, I saw the um, they were talking about like the, how much of a headache that show actually was, and the whole staff and everybody that worked on it just hated working on that show because apparently the entire the 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 house and the living room and the stage setup was a platform that was like four feet off the ground and it was just full of like pop up holes and stuff where they were where the the alf hand actors would have to have to get under it and so it was like a total safety hazard of falling off and you know <laughs> the four foot high dive or whatever that's high. fantastic that yeah, makes the show well. even better now it is you watch back on it I feel like uh, you know you know the dad always seemed to talk like he was in a lot of pain and didn't really want to be there and now you know he really didn't want to be there <laughs> now you guys know a little behind the scenes True treat story yeah. from the man rob Broussard. i wasn't i wasn't on the set i just watched an interview with these people we'll decide was, okay <laughs> yeah you let the people decide what they want to believe <clears throat> all right you don't tell them the next is frankenstein's <laughs> monster kudos for getting that right <laughs> yeah, what'd you think I was going to say, Frankenstein? Yeah, I get that yeah. a lot. Yeah. It's Frankenstein. What? Nobody what? wants to go through the process of saying Frankenstein's a monster. I don't even want to do that. I was like, look, I know his name is Frankenstein, okay? But I don't want to say Frankenstein's a monster every time. If we could, like, short it to, like, Frankmon, something like that. It's Frankmon. 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 It's the Frankmon. <laughs> what? Let's talk about this card, man. What What's going on? Like, you did the borders on all the cards, mm-hmm. and you did backgrounds. Mm-hmm. But what's going on with this background? Which one? With, with Frank. With Frankie. Is you got like a swirly thing going on with him versus you know like the like the starburst kind? Yeah, I I felt like there was a, I mean it's Frankenstein, so there's a little less action and a little more murky, you know. Yeah. Kind of misty, foggy uh, background, and uh, yeah, pretty much it. I think that's about. That's the only reason. I mean, it didn't really make any sense to draw like a, like an action thing in the background like that. Although I guess that could have been kind of interesting. It had given him a little more life, you know. Your next um, your next card needed no background because of all the wavy locks. <laughs> right, Lionel is. Yeah, I didn't leave a whole lot of room for a background. No, you either. caught you caught you caught some uh, expression right here. I know we got a lot of Thundercat fans. Yeah, I recently started collecting the old 80s uh, Marvel or Star Comics, Marvel Star Comics run, picking them up again. Yeah, they're coming back. They are. Yeah, I saw that on one of the previews on the, on the, the by the register up front. And they actually kind of like, usually I don't like too many of the, the, the uh, costume revamps, revamps on, on characters and stuff, but they kind of kept it true to form, but gave it a new look, but it's still like, it has a nice throwback vibe to it, all the costumes on the new run. So if they were going to do a live action uh, Thundercats movie, who would you cast as him? Man, like, you know, so Thundercats is kind of a barbarian styled, you get like a futuristic barbarian kind of vibe, you know what I mean? It was during the age of He-Man and Conan and so all that stuff. So I kind of want to go with like a like a macho dude, but because he's a cat, I feel like something sleek and sexy would be necessary. Yeah, but he was swole in the. I mean, he's a swole cat. Kind of, but I feel tigers, like he's also, tigers and boy lions are jack dog. That's true, but I got like swole jack vibes from like Panthro. You know what I mean? Like just, you know what I mean? Whereas like Lion is kind of a pretty boy. I feel like you're gonna wind up with like I don't know. I think I saw like some fan art that was like Brad Pitt or something like that back in the day. Oh, it would have, you know what I mean? Less like skinny. Mike O'Hearn. I don't know who that is. He, you don't know who Mike O'Hearn is? Mm-mm. Uh, he's a he was 
one of the American gladiators, but he's like he's like in like his back 50s. in the nineties. But bro, he is phenomenally like he says he's natty. Yeah. But he's like, but even when he was fourteen, like you've got to look this dude up. When we get when we get done with this, you uh, got to look up Michael Hearn. He's it, it's crazy. Anyway, but yeah, a pretty boy. He's a pretty boy. Like okay. He's, All he's, right. He so, says his looks is his job. What about yeah. like Rob Van Dam? I'm you, pretty sure he's not as pretty as he used to be. But. No, he's not. No, he no. Age has affected us all. <laughs> <laughs> it, come, it comes with the territory. A bish. This is my venom. Okay, like I love, I love the grin here. The creepy human teeth. Yes. Yeah, I was like that one too. I didn't. I was not. You know, even growing growing up in the. Um, who was it? Jeez, who are those two? And he's blue, like he's supposed to be. There was the Tom Lyle stuff, and then there was uh, Mark Bagley. You know, where you got the big, sharp teeth and the long tongue and stuff like that. And they got really out of hand with the tongue. But really, the first stuff with McFarlane, he had creepy human teeth. I thought that was creepier looking than the sharp stuff. You know, almost like it reminded me in that scene in, um, oh, shit, what was that movie? Um, Sin City with, uh, oh, jeez, I'm drawing a blank. The Frodo Baggins, dude. What's his name? Elijah Wood. So he plays that weird character, right? And there's like this scene where he's like, it's just the black silhouette and all you see is the white of his glasses and yeah, his yeah. teeth. You know, that kind of reminds me of that. Like, it's just the silhouette with the creepy human teeth. It's like a, you know, little grounded. Yeah, he looks like he's about to take a bite out of crime. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, there, there are some nice chompers. He definitely does, like, brushes and flosses regularly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them are definitely not real teeth. <laughs> those are those implants. <laughs> And here with the, it's very similar background, but because this is a brighter color, it's almost like his spidey sense went off. You know, you've yeah, got, that's kind of what I was going going for with that too. But I wanted them to kind of mesh together. They were they you were right when you made that comment. Those two were meant to accompany one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it would have been better if I had them like facing towards each other instead of in the same direction. But you know, oh well, who's gonna complain? Or they it's could free. be on the same team. They're free. You know, they're on the same team. They're looking at the same threat. <laughs> right, yeah. I don't. That's his. Uh, what would they call that when his lethal, his lethal weapon arrow or lethal no, protector, lethal protector, whatever. You know, I'm an '80s kid again. Um, the card that went with it. We're talking about Spider-Man here, guys. In case, in case you uh, didn't pick up on that here already, um, another fantastic card. This, uh, I don't know. It's going to be hard for me to even pick what I think people are going to fight over first. Um. Let's talk about another legendary character here. The, Krang. The, the the evil brain from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, why'd you want to do this guy? Because I think I did the the turtles for one of y'all's sets. The first set I was on, I did uh, those four. And then, and I think they did really well. And I, But Krang, I'd rather, I picked Krang over like Shredder, Bebop, or any of those because I liked all of the... The veiny, brainy line work. It's kind of the same reason I like the same, you know, the same reason I had so much fun doing ET was because of all the line work detail. So it was kind of the same vibe going between the two of them. And um, yeah, I don't know. I saw it like I'd seen. Also, I'd seen this take on Krang. He'd always had sharp teeth, and I had never. I don't think I'd ever actually drawn that character before either. I think that one is also a first time. And an only. I don't think I've drawn him since then. Well, you did really good. Thanks, man. It was, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. But I thought it was just kind of like the weird beady eyes and the and the big sharp fang teeth made him look like a gnarly pink potato or something. And just because there's some of you guys out there watching that is seeing this card and hearing this man say it's you know it's just the first time I've ever done it, like it's no big deal. Don't don't hate yourself. Just keep practicing, <laughs> and you know just keep hard at it because you know. One day you could do this, too. It's not the first time I ever drew anything. Like, I've drawn a lot <laughs> to this point. I think once you draw one veiny and, you know, wrinkly-looking character, you could just take those same skills that you learn from drawing other stuff and you apply it to something new. Brandon yeah, would be disappointed if I didn't you take advantage of your veiny, wrinkly comments that you've said, like, three times already. Yeah. What? Well, is that we? Is this a penis joke? Is that where? I'll just say it. Is that where we're going with this? Brandon, you disgust me. Dad Nevitt, 
all this. Dag Nabbit. Who does? Nobody says that enough anymore. Yeah, Dag Nabbit. Dag Nabbit. And Good Night Alive. <laughs> I never heard that one. What's it do? It's another old person <laughs> saying. <laughs> next up, down here, this, this dude with the face. All right. This is the face only a mother could love. Judge Dredd. Yes, Judge Dredd. I, it looks like he's, you know, chewing his nose. He does, yeah. It's always, it's almost like, uh, I don't know, like Dick Tracy or something of the future. Yeah. Just like down and, you know, unhappy because he lives in the future and it sucks. It does suck. <laughs> Pretty much every movie you see, the future's not cool. No. Like, it's you, never. you never see a movie where, like, the future's, like, nice to us. Right. So we've made there's, a lot of bad choices. There's always robots trying to kill us, zombies or vampire like right. creatures that we created because we want to have medicines. <laughs> Modern conveniences. Modern the future is just the past. Come back to haunt us. Yeah, look, look, we're getting off subject here, but since we're talking about it, and this is a special episode anyway, so you know, screw your time limits. Plus, if this goes viral, the longer the video is, the more ads they can run on it, and the more I'll get paid. Yeah, there you go. So, Move. yeah, uh, I saw this video where they were in Africa and there's like this cave and I don't want to get it wrong. So I'm not going to try to like give the cave a name, but there was this cave and there was like this mysterious illness that like some dude got there and he like died from it. And then there was years that went by and then somebody else got this like disease and died from it. And then it was like years and years went by, like 20 something years went by and somebody else and they finally figured it out. And it was, uh, it was bat droppings that particles get into the air and can make you bad sick. But it was like, they were like breathing it in the, in the particles and it was, yeah, the locals like are that. like terrified of this cave because they didn't. So they thought it was a curse of yeah. some kind and it yeah. ended up being some scientific explanation of bacteria. That but once just... again, like we shouldn't have been going to that cave, like stay the hell out of the cave. <laughs> right. You wouldn't have got the, <laughs> right. Like, just you heard mind. the, you heard, mind your business. You, know, you heard the curse. Why'd you keep going? Right. In there? Right. I, would, I remember hearing stories about stuff like, um, you know, when they would dig and like, ancient Egypt and stuff and uh, people were getting like skin infections and stuff and so they'd go in like when they would freshly shave because people shaved a lot you know and so they'd go in and the bacteria in the air would their their skin would be vulnerable to it because of the shaving the fresh shaves and stuff and they would get like mad face infections and they thought it was like uh, you know listen don't shave don't shave that's right screw your beard next up we got the puffy puff Marshmallow Man? Yeah, we kind of already covered that guy, I guess. Yeah, we did. But that, was that he there, looks tasty. Was that while I mean, the camera was rolling? I, can't, I think so. I don't Look remember. how puffy he is. That was while the, yeah, was while the camera was rolling. Yeah. Look how puffy he is. I just want to eat him. And just put him in a, a stick and roast him. And mm, See, I even went with like, the burning background. I debated if I was going to do a part of his head like charred, you know, but I thought it might make people too hungry for roasted marshmallows. You could, man, you need to figure out how to make like rub and sniff like they did on that DC. Oh, you rub it and it smells like a s'more. Nah, you might be onto something. I with might that. be onto something. That'd be cool if there was like you could buy that in a can, but then I feel like you know, to buy it if you got like a can of it, then you'd have to draw a lot of marshmallow puffs. Uh, if, if you guys are out there watching this and you guys would like to see Rob Broussard create um, rub and sniff cards as opposed to poop and sniff <laughs> cards please hit that like share and comment poop and sniff cards were never on the table man I don't, know where you can. <laughs> don't let him lie to you all right moving on up we have uh the extraterrestrial yeah et i'm uh i'm not gonna use the wrinkly what was it shrivelly and wrinkly yeah yeah, yeah. the wrinkly shrivelly description there's a yeah, lot of it's lines very, very liney and yeah. uh yeah. No, I had a lot of fun with that one. Uh that was cool. Doing um I don't know, just taking a you taking a photograph and then turning it into um an illustration is always neat. And I was looking at a lot of um like made movie adaptation comics, like the the um, did you ever see the nineteen eighty nine Batman movie adaptation? Comic book. It's actually really cool. They do um They just they just did another one. Yeah, it didn't really it wasn't True to form. It's not the same. I don't remember who the artist was on the first one. So they did their, their 89 Batman, and then they had the Batman Returns. And there were completely different artists on each one. And I, they, so I don't know who did the work on the newest series. It was like a six, 
issue run that you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. That one's uh, kind of like, it was supposed to take place after Batman Returns, but it is based on Michael Keaton and Michelle Pfeiffer and, and um, oh. Danny DeVito. No, he wasn't in it. The guy, he plays Two-Face in the book because he was uh, Harvey Dent in the movies from 89. Danny DeVito was in it. He was a penguin. Yeah, but he's not in the book. Oh. Because he dies in the movie. But Michelle Pfeiffer doesn't, and you finally get a story with Two-Face, the Harvey Dent, but it's based on... Come on, man. The... Jack Nicholson. No. <laughs> Star Wars. Uh... Harrison Ford. No. <laughs> the Lando <laughs> Calrissian. The actor that played Lando. <laughs> What's his name? Help me out here. Bigfoot. Yeah, I'm I don't know, play. dog. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm the face, dude. That's I'm not... I don't. I'm not the memory bank. That's yeah, I'm not like, either. We really shouldn't be the two on no, the, in front of this camera. No, no, no. Right that's now. why, like, I, I need like <laughs> we need like a the pop culture almanac person sitting here. Yeah, do you know like how Joe Rogan has what's his name that sits over off the camera? <laughs> right, that like, he looks can, like hey, look up. this up for me. Yeah, right. every time I like, don't let me be a liar. Like, <laughs> right. Look that cave up right now, so everybody knows <laughs> I'm really telling the truth. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. But it, it, the new one they did that uh, the the it's called Batman '89 and it was like the six issue run. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The one when I'm going back to the movies one, the movie ones where they take like, you know, they take like the photos and the images and the, the stock footage and whatnot, and they they illustrate it. And so I thought that was really cool. You know, and I did like my Ghostbusters one, and my Ninja yeah. Turtle movie poster, and all of that stuff. And um, I kind of got the same idea. I just pulled up an image and illustrated a photograph of, of E.T. and I thought that was a lot of fun. Especially anything that has that much like shadowing and contrast that you really kind of get to go all out with the details. Because it doesn't matter how much lines I accidentally do on his face, he's supposed to look old and shriveled up like that. So That boy almost got blue eyes. He does have blue eyes, yeah. No, I mean, one blue this way, one blue that way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, shame. <laughs> Next we got Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah, everything I just said about E.T. in the Batman book, same thing applies there. I guess I kind of illustrate like a photograph of, you know, Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice. So that's kind of fun. Dude, where did Zombie Captain come from in the 80s? Nothing at all. I just felt like drawing it. But it's very 80 vibe, though. Like, is it's it? got like the Return of the Living Dead zombie feel. Like, you know, it doesn't look like a... Actually, now that you mentioned, I think I was doing that uh, Return of the Living Dead poster. I See was, what I'm saying? Yeah, I may have, like, pulled from that at the same time. I don't know. Wasn't that, like, back in October as well? So it was, like, monster season? Like, last... I don't know, man. I'm always drawing monsters all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, man. And from the shiny helmet to the lips, he nailed this RoboCop, guys. Who's that actor? We just uh, we just covered this. Yeah, we're Another not the, we're not the persons. We're, yeah. <laughs> It's that bald white guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So I saw somebody had posted. We're not talking a, about Stone Cold. Somebody put a <laughs> different bald white guy. Like a well tanned white guy. Yeah. No, this guy looks really English, but he's not. I mean, I saw somebody had posted a picture the other day. It was like, I want somebody to look at me the way Carrie Fisher looks like, whatever that guy's name is. And it was in, it was from back in the day, and she's just completely ogling him while he's like talking to somebody. She's just like dreamy. Oh. You know? But yeah. What was it? I just remember his real name. His name in the in the movie was Murphy. Yeah, and it's a damn shame they cut his all his parts off. Yeah, it's just it's just his face and his brains. Actually, they didn't leave anything. <laughs> I don't know if there was anything left. They kind of turned him into Swiss cheese. <laughs> what did That's you do to me? Yeah. What did you think about the new RoboCop movie? Did you like that? Is that the one the where it's all black, one? like the black suit? He does have. A I don't black think suit. I've actually seen that one. I saw the first three. They like. I think it starts out. Actually, I think I did see that one. It's all right. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I liked that one because, you know. It was, it's just like the the new Judge Dredd. I liked it. I was going to say that. I liked the new Judge Dredd one, too. I thought that, what's his name, did a good job from the boys. Yep, yep, yep. For sure. Um, He's going to be somebody else, too, in something. They uh, they just announced it. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. And. I feel like he would have made a good Logan. He'd be a solid Wolverine. Who who did they cast him as? He just got cast as a superhero in something, like, didn't he? Just a few days ago. Yeah. I don't know. It'll come back to me. Leave it. Comment in the section below, but we're probably going to look it up after we're done anyway. <laughs> who is this guy, dude? 
You don't know Ambush Bug? I do not know oh, Ambush Bug. Oh, shame. That's all right. Nobody knows who Ambush Bug is. Tell these people who Ambush Bug is while I'm Ambush look up Bug's who this a detective, guy was. Uh, detective Comics character from back in the day. Uh, it was like a, it was, I, I want to say it was almost kind of had a Deadpool vibe in that he would like, like he would break the fourth wall, if I'm, if I remember correctly, where he would talk to the viewer a lot. But he was, I don't even know his backstory. I just Johnny Cage. That's it. That's what it was. That's it right. Was close to being a superhero. Bear, I mean, pretty super. Super, su pretty super. Johnny Cage. Yeah. Where I feel like he would have made, and like on the same, he would have made a better. Like I feel like he would have made a better Kano. Yeah, I could see him as Kano for sure. Yeah. He does that rough around the edges thing really well, rather than like Johnny Cage was always kind of the cool guy with the glasses and the nice hair. Yeah. You know, but you never know. The guy's a pretty versatile actor. So we'll see how it how it goes. So that's ambush bug, bug from yeah. the Detective Comics. Yeah, okay. for sure. I don't know his backstory. I just he was like as a kid. I remember there was like him, and then he had like a little kid version of his character, and it was like this cute little cheeky, just adorable bug character in like a red, you know, a sweepy Popeye looking suit. He is a bug character, but he is no match for the next bug character. For the tick, absolutely not. No way, the tick's the best. Uh, I grew up in the 90s again, late 80s, early 90s, so I remember watching that whole animated series. You know, But I didn't even know it was a comic book. I saw it on Fox Kids growing either. up, and I kind of started getting into the comic books later. You know, Plus, they always do like the Christmas Yule Log, Yule Tide, uh, comic book specials every year, and those are always fun. Affleck, you the bomb in Phantoms, bro! What? From James Holland Bob? When I see Ben Affleck, they're like, Affleck, you the bomb. Oh, that's fans, right. Bro. Which movie was that? Was that the Strikes Back? I think so, yeah. That's right. Because I seen him in Hollywood, yeah. Because, you know, Affleck was in a role in the movie. But... He was. He Well, there was, yeah, because he did, um, it was the one, Mall Rats. Yeah. He was in Mall He was like the douchey boy, new boyfriend. Guy. He was a comic book guy. He's the one that, that he's the one that did oh, the comic book. The inker, the tracer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's always making that wise guy. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot. Those things. That whole, like, Jay and Silent Bob universe thing is just crazy. Yeah, it is. It's always remember who's who, because like you said, they got, like, he plays, but he's in a couple of movies where he plays two different characters. Yeah, he's right? in he's in Chasing Amy and Dogma. Yeah, and, yeah, but they're never the same guy. Yeah. But Jay, Jay and Silent Bob are always the same characters in the whole universe. I'm pretty sure he's the same dude. Is he? Yeah. But, like, he plays him, he plays Ben Affleck in the movies, but he also plays this other role that's this other guy. Right. So he plays himself in the movie as Ben Affleck. Right, but there was also well, there was the Mallrats movie because they got the guy from uh, from uh, Clerks. What's his name? Dante is yeah. the actor's in it, but he's not playing Dante. He plays somebody else in, in uh, Mallrats as well. He's like one of the he's like one of the uh, contestee dudes on the on the dating show, and he's like giving like the cheesy one liners, and he's got the little ponytail thing or something. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, anyway, my yeah. point was that the Jay and Silent Bob universe is always kind of crazy because you get the same actors and different characters. And I just came to mind because Phantom. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't play the Phantom. He played Daredevil. He was in a movie called Phantoms. Was that like a like a horror spooky? Yeah. We, we're, need, we're going we got a guy in the chair. We need to look, have a guy. We don't have chair. a guy. We don't have a guy <laughs> like we're not. I'm not sophisticated <laughs> enough or rich enough like my good buddy Joe Rogan here. But you know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, but, but Swamp Thing. Who was the guy that played Phantom? Who was that actor? I, I don't know. Zane. Billy Zane? Was that his name? I don't know. I can only look at one thing. It was a terrible movie. I mean, I, I enjoy it for nostalgia reasons. Yeah, Phantoms. Phantoms. What, was that? what year was that? 90, let me guess, 98. 98, yeah. Boom! Yeah. You can always tell by the way it looks, you know. You the bomb in Phantoms, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Swamp Thing. I love Swamp Thing, bro. Me Swamp too. Thing's like one of my favorite DC characters, period. People don't understand sure. that he is like mega powerful. He is, yeah. He's like, um, did you uh, did you watch the 2019 TV series? I have not. You know, by the, time, by the time I found out, they'd already done away with like the DC universe. And yeah. Everything. And there's no, like I heard that there's somewhere you can go find it to watch it. Yeah, it's streaming free on something. I can't remember what it is. It's not on HBO, surprisingly, because yeah, they have all the DC stuff over there. But it's somewhere else. I want to say it's on like Tubi or something like that. I heard it was really good. It was actually. Um, I mean, you know, 
it's it's definitely like made for TV where like the acting is terrible and but the storyline's kind of cool. The graphics are pretty cool. It's really violent. <laughs> like you see the vines like ripping people in half and stuff like that. So that's kind of crazy, you know. And uh, the infection causes people to like when they get infected by this thing that's making all the plants come to life. It uh it like they start getting vines and stuff grown out of them until they die and it like fries you know and they and then they just find their corpse and they're like there's leaves and stuff's growing out of it. It's pretty cool looking though. It's kind of scary. And it takes place in the swamp. And being from Louisiana, I'm a little bit offended by some of it. But, you know, it's a little bit insulting. I imagine. Cause like, oh, man. I remember hanging out with uh, some of my other local artist buddies in Lafayette. Um, and we were watching it at, our, at my house every week when it was coming out and stuff. And there was this one scene where the dude... Like, it's like he's like the mayor or something. He's talking about how my grandfather farmed these swamps. And we're going, what? Like, we don't farm swamps. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> like, you hunting those things. <laughs> oh, swamp donkeys. Yeah, it's just crazy. And so they were talking about it. I think that's kind of the only downside. But if you're not from Louisiana, you're not going to catch it. And you and the, you won't find the accents are too cheesy either. Yeah. Because, you know, we live there. We're used to hearing people talk. And it's like, eh. I mean, I'm basically, we're basically in Louisiana right now. Like, yeah, you guys, we're awfully close. Awfully yeah. close. If you can buy boudin. You're close. Yeah, we're and close. Y'all can buy boudin and stuff yeah. out here. I mean, y'all got a Creole truck in the back or something like that, right? That's right. Yeah, Cajun, yeah, Cajun truck out in the back. That's yeah. right. Cooking gumbo, as a matter of fact. Um, next, we have a card that you said that you kind of <laughs> feel like you just Albert should have held on to him. Yeah, my buddy Michael LaForge out in Houston saw it at a, what I was after. I think I was working on it at a show or something. He's like, man, I want that card. And I was like, well, I'll sell it to you for 40 bucks, Or... You can try to win it Marty and try to win it for free. So he was like, mm, "Yeah, I'm gonna wait and talk to Marty." <laughs> like, all right, I see it's still here. So yeah, he didn't get it. Either he didn't talk to him, or the conversation look, didn't go look, so well. I, you people, <laughs> okay, listen to me. I mean, this. I've been in cahoots with these dudes doing this for I don't know how how many years. Years. Hmm. I have never ever seen anybody get one of these cards that wasn't like put in a loot box or like. I, if, like you came to the store and Marty was feeling super generous or something, he might just go in there and the ones that go into the loot box might randomly just give a kid a card or yeah. something. But I've never seen anybody be like, man, I would really like to have that Judge Dread, and somebody be like, oh well, here, just take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's never happened. Yeah, in like, like six no. years. It's you got to watch the show, chump. Yeah, yeah. So I don't care how much they like you or you know how many people respond <laughs> no, to your comments. Yeah, no special happening. treatment. That's yeah. right. Everybody's equal here. Except me. I'm better than all of you. <laughs> What's this card? <laughs> that's, uh, that's Dark Man. Do Dark you, Man. Do you remember what let Liam Neeson movie back in like 94 or 93? I absolutely remember Dark Man, yeah. I yeah. was thinking it was the Invisible Man. Almost. I think that was like a there's, a, there's a backstory there, and I wish I had looked it up before I came in, but uh, the, it was something like they wanted to do a movie on like the Invisible Man or somebody like that and they couldn't get the rights to do it so they i think they just like made up this own character for the film called dark man the funny thing is after the movie came out i think they they did like three movies i want to say that uh but liam neeson was only in the first one i think um which if you don't know who that is are you star wars kids it's qui-gon jinn or the dude from taken or the dude from taken and he's got a whole special skill set well it's kind of like that but he's like a scientist dude and I don't know he gets like blown to hell and his face is all messed up but he has like this technology where he can make fake masks that look just like people so he'd like take photographs and scan them and it would it would it would print out like a 3D printer mask like flesh toned and everything and he'd wear it but it would only last for like an hour or so and then it would start bubbling and get all like gross and uh, you know and uh he would go and he'd fight crime like that so yeah he wore his like cloak and everything he has a little mask. And Marvel shortly thereafter like released a couple of I think there's three volumes to it and they're like maybe four issues each, three or four issues each. But yeah. Just one of those throwback characters that not a lot of people know about or care about. We started with fuzzy, we're gonna end with fuzzy. Yeah, and then cute you, too. Do you think Alejandra did that on purpose? What's that? She put a fuzzy at the top and a fuzzy at the bottom. I mean you might be onto something there. I'm watching you. We see what you're doing.
So let's talk about Gizmo, bro. These these guys are making a comeback too. They're everywhere now. I didn't hear anything about that, really. Yeah, bro. Everybody's loving the 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 Gizmos. Are they doing the, a remake? Or are we gonna get like a? They're doing some kind of show. Like, I I am of the I am of the opinion that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. No, they're doing but, some kind of show, and it's almost geared towards kids. Oh, I did hear about this. Yeah, yeah it's an animation thing. Is it anime? I think not anime. Alejandra. It's a cartoon. <laughs> Look, I'm going to use her as my specialist. Is this show an animation show? Well, I mean, I don't know. They know. If it, she'll answer. Leave it. a comment below. <laughs> All right, man, look, tell all these people you're going to be here in the store tomorrow, but, of course, this video will not be airing. I, I don't know. I don't know when this video is airing. Anyway, so I ain't going to lie to y'all. This is another one of them things, like, I don't have enough information to be doing this job. Just be, just be real. They seem to be kind of a surprise where um, you air, what, but do you do the video? You don't do the giveaways on these videos, right? Like, you do the interview video, and then you do the live thing later. Is that what it is? No, this, this is going to be this is gonna be the interview giveaway video all together, all at once. All at one time. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, we would have just not showed the cards and just talked to you. Yeah, that's not as exciting. It's not, no. Not when we can do this in person. <laughs> <laughs> just hanging out. Tell these people your social media. Uh, I'm on Facebook. What am, I don't even know what my handle is. I think it's I think it's R. Broussard, 1989. Shoot. I wasn't prepared. Rob Broussard. Uh Oh gosh, I'm such a geezer. Are you wearing that hat in your profile picture? No, I don't. No, my not at the moment. And it, who's to say what my profile picture will be? When I don't even you, remember what your profile picture is. By the time we share this video, my handle is it is uh, r dot broussard dot nineteen eighty nine r dot broussard dot nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, that's it. And that's that's, that's your main that's, that's it, your man. main avenue yeah. of. I used to have Instagram. I got rid of it. I don't know. Seem to be doing all right, considering how horrible I promote myself. But I'm not complaining. It is what it is. I mean, the right people know you. They're <laughs> right. <laughs> we know you. <laughs> and we're about to go introduce him to this food truck park. Yeah, I'm starving. I might go hit up some of that Cajun food and see what's happening with all that. Yeah, man. You have definitely should or or ladies do that. Ladies, the, the burrito tacos are fire. That does sound pretty good, actually. I'm going for some sauce. tacos right now. Dip it in the sauce. That's it. Yeah. All right, guys. Don't forget to like, share, invite your friends. Help us do something. Yeah, man. Get some freebies. See y'all next time. Later, Uncle Tater. Nasty. We out.